I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith, and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us. I'm happy tonight to welcome Christian Garcia. Appreciate you coming and oh. sharing your story. Thank you, Bishop Earl. And it's kind of an interesting one, so uh, we'll get right to it. You were actually born in Mexico City. Right. I uh, was born in Mexico City, and I moved to the States kind of long ago, but yeah, I, I grew up in a really Mormon family, and then... Did you? Now, they were actually converts, right? Yeah. Yeah, they they uh, they were converts, and it's funny that I'm the only one that is a Christian, and they still Mormons. My brother, he's serving his LDS mission, is still right now in this moment. <laughs> Where's he at? He is in Idaho. Yeah, I guess that's okay to say. Yeah. Now, you were 14 when the missionaries came to the house. Yeah, I was really young. We, my dad always, kind of, we always exercise some kind of. Um, different things until one day my brother, he became Mormon. And our, fama, our whole family, we started practicing the Mormon church. Yeah. So I grew up, but I always had questions from the beginning. You didn't, did and you get a testimony of Joseph Smith? You know, I was on? really young, and it's funny when they tell you that you're gonna feel something in, in your chest, right? And most people will say that I feel it in my heart, a burning, the, in, the burning in my yeah. yeah. And they, they kind of they will show you that it's right here. But if you, you know biology, and if you know your body, then you know that your heart is right here. It's not right here. But <laughs> anyhow, so then one day I read that scripture that the Apostle Paul says that don't ever believe in your heart, right? Don't let your heart trouble you. So I started ha asking a lot of questions to myself, but I didn't care at the moment until until I one day I saw in the Salt Lake Temple. So then I became a really, really strong Mormon. Well, let's back up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So your family converted to the church. Had they been Catholic? Ah, uh, they didn't practice anything. Didn't practice anything. Yeah. Okay. And so, did they? Your mom and dad? Did they? Uh, they're strong in the church. Very strong. And they Very stayed in Mormons, the church. Yeah. Then you eventually moved to Salt Lake. Right. Was that how old were you then? Do you remember? Thirteen, twelve, thirteen, something like that. My actual, my dad and I, we even met President Monson. <laughs> oh, uh, how yeah, was so, that? What uh, happened? It was intensive. You know, I was. I thought that by, you know, they always talk about President Monson, but um, I didn't feel, and I didn't get what I always thought that I was going to feel or think about it. What were the it circumstances, though? I mean, how did you meet him? You what? know, it's, I don't know, I thought that he was going to be a, someone that I couldn't talk to real quick and kind of say a few things, but he probably was too busy or he didn't care about anything, but... Uh, was but it a, at a conference, a general conference, or...? It was in like kind of a private meeting and... Oh. So um, then I, I, there is a scripture that it came to my mom and to my mind, and if I remember, it's in uh, 
Oh, I'm I'm really good with scriptures, and right now I'm kind of <laughs> struggling. I but understand. Uh, Don't it's worry about it. I, I remember it's John. I'm sorry. It's Matthew twelve, twenty one. No, I'm sorry. It's twelve twenty three. What does it say? It's, you know, it says pretty much when people think that they're everything and they know everything, mm -hmm. one day they'll know that <laughs> it's not truth. You know, like how Jesus used to teach, you know, he says the, ba the best way to teach is by the example. Yeah. And I always thought that, you know, I, I always thought that President Monzo was, was a going to be that way, but it, it, I'm not judging, I just... So you were disappointed? I was kind of yeah. disappointed, yeah, yeah. I was. it was kind of sad, but my so brother that is serving his mission right now had a chance to meet him too. Oh. Yeah, so... Well, so now you said that you were active then after 14, and then you eventually get married in the temple. Which I temple did, was that? I did at uh, Salt Lake Temple. Okay. I thought that it was going to be a really good experience in my life. Mm -hmm. How was it? Real scary. Was it? <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, Did you feel prepared for it or? Uh, no, I, I, I still can't believe that people will believe or will say things about the temple because it's it's scary what you see. I mean, I don't see the point of doing this. I mean, I don't know. It's in. Uh, I'm saying these things. It's in Romans. 116 it says don't ever f uh it's about preaching the gospel oh my goodness it's my <laughs> kind of nervous i'm sorry it's in romans 116 it says um don't be ashamed of the gospel yeah you know that's why i'm doing this uh, just for the record, I'm not getting any money or anything like that. <laughs> no. This no, is we, just because I'm serious. <laughs> this uh, is all volunteer. Oh, so when Christ. you went through the temple, you you just it just seemed strange to you. Very strange. Did you go back more often? The or? signs, and I have I don't know I shouldn't say this, but when I concealed to my well, why back then? Uh, I remember that they told me the name, and I couldn't hear it. And uh, her Your name, name or her name? Her name, you know, they uh -oh. believe that they give you a special name, and if she's good, uh, then you call the second her coming, you that, call her yeah, right, with that name. She will raise. And, and you forgot the name? I, you didn't hear I it? I couldn't hear it because I'm kind of deaf, so I couldn't hear it. And I was struggling for months. So did I didn't tell her. Did you finally ask her? <laughs> I kind of <laughs> asked her, and she was like, Why did you ask me that in, in, in our house? And I said, Well, he, had, he was really mad. He says, how come you didn't wait until the temple? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh. Yeah, I was like, oh, I don't know. So anyhow, until now, it's it's something that <laughs> I still can't believe it, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, it wasn't until I came out of Mormonism that I really realized the purpose of temples, at least right. in the Old Testament, was to sacrifice animals. And had you understood that either? Oh, uh, back then. Back uh, then? Back then, I didn't. I didn't no. even know what Melchizedek means back then. I thought it was like, it was a king or this. They, the doctrine pretty much explained you one thing, but what really make, made me really, really frustrated is when I thought that I was a Mormon, when I wasn't even prepared. Well, I, I read the Book of Mormon, right? And I still, I can tell you scriptures right now. Oh, my Mormon, I, all these scriptures are in my head. Why? Only he knows, but when I noticed and I knew that I didn't read the Book of Mormon, that I read the copy or they changed it more than two or three dozen times, the real Book of Mormon, is it, it wasn't even blue, it's oh, yellow. The original Book of Mormon. It's, it's yeah. yellow, and I mean, it's, it's totally different. Yeah. It's not one word, it's, everything is a lot different. Of yeah. So I was like, how am I going to have a true and uh, how am I gonna be able to believe something that is not even the true word of <laughs> Joseph Smith? I mean Joseph Smith wrote that other book and I didn't even read it. I'm saying that I read it when I didn't. Well I'm lying to myself. So then I start asking more questions. Wow. Did you ever talk to your folks, uh, your mom and dad about this stuff? I did and they were really mad about it. My <laughs> my wife and the time I uh, one day I, 
I asked her, you know, how come I, I had so many questions? And she was like, well, I'm the fourth generation or third generation in my family, and I can explain you everything. And I said, all right, are you ready? And she said, yeah. I said, so well, she was willing to, to yeah. talk or She was like visit. really prepared well, good. because she has a... I said, well, do you know what gospel means? And she goes, she says, yeah, gospel means uh, this, this, and that. And like, she talked for my 10 minutes. And I was really patient and says, no, gospel means good news. So the good news are, you know what are the good news? And it says, good news are that we'll save. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what do you expect? And she said, uh, no, that's not true. So I was like, wait, okay. So anyhow, the next week, uh, I didn't go to church the next Sunday. Uh, the only thing that people used to talk it was about the Book of Mormon. And when I used to read the Book of Mormon and they said Nephi had a sword and I had a horse. And you know, back then I, I started reading, I, I was reading about uh, Christopher Columbus and things like that and I said, wait, in this continent back then, they didn't have horses, they didn't have swords, they didn't have all this, they and the book of metal. metal. Yeah. There were metal in here until now, until now, there is no way that they can prove that. So I started thinking, well, uh, I was born in Mexico, which Mexico means Mexico, which means something. In Aztecs, they believe that is it, it, you come from the moon, and I just can't believe it that I'm believing this. So I start reading more about history. Um, and you learn horses, more and more. Yeah, more. horses were until 1492. Guess what? Metal was the same thing. And so I learned more. So I have more questions for my, back then was my wife, now is my ex-wife. And what did she, did she ever, what did she think about not being able to? <laughs> she was really mad. Yeah. She was really mad. She, she started calling me all the names that you can think of. So you had lots of fights over... We had every day, every day we had a fight. Over religion. Over religion. And I said, well, wait, if you we're in the same team, what do we fight for? I mean, uh, Jesus Christ. Do you know what Jesus Christ means as a Mormon? Yeah. What Jesus Christ means? Oh, well, Jesus Christ means the blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, Jesus Christ means Jesus is a name from the... A place in Jerusalem, you know, it's in Bethlehem, and he was born in Bethlehem. Christ means king. I mean, uh, I don't think that you're getting the whole thing. So I start praying and reading more the Bible, and at the same time, I was reading the Book of Mormon. And I said, I have to put, I have to prove this even is right or it's not right. Because in the Bible says that true never change. Yeah. So I have to prove this that is true. And every day, I felt stronger reading the Bible. So one day, uh, I came back. Uh, it was a Sunday night, around 9 p.m. or you know, something like that. And my ex-wife, she was with the state president, the bishop, and somebody else oh boy. at my place. Just because you had raised these questions. Yeah, I because I raised these questions. And I, never, I didn't even ask why, but she came and she was like, well, okay, here are the high priests and they can tell you everything. I said, all right. I said, brother, I can't remember his last name. Uh, I says, we used to, we used to go to uh, English word. So I was like, brother, so, so, how come blacks, and I'm sorry to say that word because I really don't like it. In my country, we never had that problem, but how come people from dark color didn't go to temples? How come they couldn't have? They couldn't go to temples if we, they were good Christians. You know, they were good people. How come they didn't go to temples? And this guy says, "Well, I don't know." And I said, "Well, I thought you were going to answer the questions, <laughs> and you don't know." He says, "I was really mad." He says, "I says, don't you ever thought about it? It's in Revelations one fourteen, and it will explain you. Chapter one, verse fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen says." Jesus Christ wasn't white. Where did you get all these ideas? Oh. So you say that Jesus Christ wasn't allowed to go. So why Jesus Christ are you preaching? So he got really mad and says, are you saying that I'm racist? I'm like, no, I believe that you're believing in a racist God. The one that 
They didn't like blacks, Asians, because he's in Brigham Young said this, and that's why I didn't want to go to BYU, because I don't support this. <laughs> and I'm serious, I couldn't go to BYU and not pay a dime, but I didn't want to go because I don't want to look like that. I don't support, if you don't like it, why do you have to support it? But anyhow. Well, now you've mentioned uh, several mm -hmm. races there, and of course the blacks were the only ones that mm -hmm. were limited, but uh, in 1978, Eight. of course, that, that all changed. But you'd heard that, uh, or had you ever heard this before, that they had had this restriction before 1978? Before, no. And even uh, one day, in, it is in 19, 1998, President Hinckley said, we do not believe in the Christians, in the Christian God. And I said to myself, what? I just can't believe it, I heard that. You're still an active Mormon, And I was yeah. really active, I was yeah. Googling, and I, I play it over and over again, says, he said that. Yeah, he said that. So I went and I started reading the history of the church. Uh, I love to read, you know, it's, it's always right there. And one day in the volume six, and this is not true, if, if, you, if you're an active Mormon, uh, if you have these questions or not, this is a fact, and you cannot change fact because you can lie to anyone, even to God. Don't ever lie to yourself. Go to, if you go to, ch to a church on Sunday, go to the library, and it's called Histories of, History of the Church. And I'm a Mexican, I'm a Hispanic, and this is my second language. And I read it. It's uh, page 406, okay? Uh, read it. I mean, uh, it's really sad. Joseph Smith said that he was better than Paul, than Peter, James, and Paul, and even than Jesus Christ because he held his ch a church, and a church that is probably right now 14 million. Yeah. And you know, it's really sad when Mormon says that, oh, well, we are 14 million, but it's a small five. It, they look really, it's really sad to listen to these things because. If you Google, the population is 7 billion, something around. Do your math. <laughs> How many Christians are in the world? Around 2, two billion, something like that, 2 billion. How many Muslims are in the world? Around 1.5 billion. So you, do your math. Uh, don't lie to yourself. Math never changed. That's why I was so upset when I found out that polygamy was right when it was right. And right now, in our days, polygamy, it's, it's allowed it. My example, uh, I was married, Solid Temple, August 27, 2005. And I got divorced because my ex-wife didn't like that and didn't believe it. So pretty much she chose not to believe the answers that they were on the Bible. So she didn't believe in the Bible. But anyhow... If you read your books, it's in Doctrine and Covenants 132. It's right there. Is it still right there? The Doctrine yeah. 132. It's right there. And I mean, if you, English is your first language, what do you like to yourself? I mean, if that couldn't be in Greek or Hebrew, my pastor Sean, he kind of teach Hebrew in some ways or Greek in some ways, and I kind of Google it or I read about Greek or this, this, and that. And I understand more things thanks to my pastor, Sean. And Jesus Christ always is there with me. I know that. But Doctrine and Covenants 132 says that in heaven, you're going to have more than whatever wise you want. I mean, uh, in Mormon doctrine. In the yeah. Mormon doctrine. In the Bible, if you go to, uh, what is it, the Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 1717, 17, it says right there that Jehovah wasn't happy when they found out that they were having more wives. So he was really upset. And the other thing, it's in uh, the same book in the Old Testament. It says, uh, chapter 18, talks about when Jehovah told him not to talk with dead people, gypsies, or people with a magic thing. He was really upset. And Joseph Smith didn't have a job. I mean, you know, yeah. he never had a job. He always pretended that he was going to find gold. And a dreamer of dreams. Dreamers of dreams. Yeah. He was in jail. He killed, he, he killed, I believe, two guys when... In um, Carthage. In Carthage. Yeah. Uh, and this is a fact. I'm not, not lying. I mean, if you believe in, 
in Jesus Christ from the Book of Mormon is totally different than the one in the Bible. I was going to ask you if you noticed a difference between your, your Mormon Jesus and, and now as a Christian. Do you notice a difference? Oh yeah, it's really simple. Uh, as a fact, I can tell you it's in Second Nephi. I believe it's in the chapter 27. If you read by the end, it's going to tell you what happened to the people that they didn't listen to to God. So they start changing, you know, they, they have my skin, probably dark skin. And the good people, they were white. But if you go through history, and the Americans in this continent they never have white people until yeah, until, until Europeans 1492. Came. So were you all looking at all to have your skin mm -hmm. turn white? Were, were you thinking of that? You're like probably I'm gonna turn white with green colors, right? But one day, and the people they do believe that uh, there is some people, and one day I I I met a what do you call that a uh, FLDS. Yeah. And he says, you know what, Christian, you think you're a Mormon? Back then when I used to be a really good Mormon. And I said, oh, yeah, I'm a good Mormon. And I believe in my heart that Joseph Smith is a prophet. And he says, no, you're not a Mormon. We're real good Mormons because we have the mm -hmm. real, we follow the same doctrine. We you guys are not Mormons. You're we practice polygamy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, Did and that I said, surprise you? Yeah, I was real upset. And I read it, and there you go again. Lie after lie after lie after lie. Mm -hmm. What I, if we, this is really true. I always thought about. It. I have a a niece and a nephew, and I can believe if we, my niece gets twelve or thirteen, I can believe. And it hurts. I don't want to say this, but it's true. It's a fact. Brigham Young had really young wives. Yeah. And look his age, 70, 80, and he was pretty much sleeping with ladies that were 14, 15. This is a fact. Read it. If you have a daughter, think about it. Is it true? Is there, <laughs> were you able to, will you do that? I mean, as a man, will you do that? I mean, it's different. So that's how he started having more questions. And one day, I, I was really mad. I said, you know what, God? And I'm sorry, God, to, to keep saying this, but, you know, uh, you're full of lies. Uh, you're, you're racist. You, mean, you felt like the, yeah, if the Mormon, church is true, then God if must all be If all this is true, you know, Satan probably is, is going to bring me better life because he, he cares and he, I can join him no matter what the skin I am or no matter what I believe or no matter, he will accept me the way I am, right? But Jesus Christ from the Book of Mormon, it's another Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ from from the Bible is it's my savior. Yeah. Mm. So what Save do you understand? Grace. Do you understand grace differently now? Oh, totally. I You are working your there yourself is, to the bone as uh, a Mormon? There's a question as a Mormon. How many points do you get if you go to the temple? How many points? <laughs> yeah, you know. How many uh points do you get if you pay your titan? That's another thing, you know, when you start paying your titan. Uh, if you Google the companies from the from the church, and this is money, money, money talks in this planet, and it is really sad. See, if a hundred billion dollars, what companies do they make a hundred billion dollars or one billion? And what can you do with a billion? This is your homework. Jesus Christ, when he sent his apostles, he asked not to carry gold or silver, yeah. right? Never. So, since they be, I mean, it, look everything. Uh, Jesus Christ never cared money. Uh, I think he was against that. And the temple, you know, he was crucified because of the temple. Pretty much, he says that he was going to destroy the temple, and he was going to build it in three days. And we were saved by grace. There. I mean, I'm a sinner. I probably am not. I'm, I know I'm not a perfect person. I know I did a lot, a lot of mistakes in the past. Uh, but you guilty. realize that Jesus yep. is sacrificed and uh, Jesus is through my his savior. shed blood that our, our sins are paid for. Right. It's yeah. in Psalms 23. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. Well, uh, we've only got a couple of minutes left. Right. Uh, we, you were, we were talking earlier about perhaps you sharing your, your story. And would you care to do that now? 
Sure. Uh, one day when uh, I was walking, one guy, as I was really active in the church, and I made out of the U, and he says, well, Christian, are you a Christian? I said, well, I'm a Mormon. And he says, but I'm a Christian. And he, well, he, his reaction was like, no, you're not a Christian. I said, what? I'm a Christian because I'm a Mormon. And I know that Joseph Smith is a prophet with his 30-something wives. <laughs> and he says, no, you're, not, you're a Mormon. He got to my heart. So uh, I thought about it, and I wasn't a Christian. Christian means that you're going to follow Jesus Christ, nothing else. Turn your life over to him. He's the only one. Okay, would you, what would you say to the LDS people then? Hey, we love you. Uh, one word that I learned in Greek, thanks to my pastor now, is agape. Agape. Uh, agape, agape love. Google it, please Google it. Agape, Jesus Christ, love us with the agape love, which means unconditional. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're not perfect, if you believe this, or if you like one or another thing. No one is perfect. And if they tell you that they're perfect and they're following all the things that they're telling you, the only thing that they can tell you they're liars. Uh, we're liars, but you know they, they're lying for one thing. Yeah. They're destroying your faith. Would you have them study? Oh, um, read things? And please, if you're a Mormon, read the Book of Mormon, but the real one. Not the purple Book of Mormon. Read it read from the now on. Just, yeah, the 1830. <laughs> Go ahead, Google it. I mean, please do. Uh, read your history. Histories of the Church, Volume 3. It's a good volume that you can read. Volume 6, page 410. 49, it starts for 48. I can tell you. And when Joseph is me, said that he was better than Peter, yeah, Jesus, and John. Boast. And Jesus Christ. That's if you believe that, I tell you, I love you, no matter what. <laughs> Christian, thanks so much for Thank coming. You I appreciate you sharing and uh, uh, interesting story. And and your family still active? And They're still active. Not listening. They probably won't listen. But mm -hmm. every time that we have or we meet or we have lunch or something. You talk? It's, it's in a... It's uh, Paul used to I talk about it. I guess our time's up, I'm afraid. Okay. I'm sorry. It's all right. We've just got a couple of seconds Thank left. You. We appreciate you watching, and um, we'll see you next week. Good night.